every measurement in a lab has to have some sort of uncertainty. We're going to talk about how you determine the amount of uncertainty for each measurement in your lab. The uncertainty of a measured quantity depends on two things. The instrument that you use and how you use that instrument. That's the key thing that you want to remember each time. Typically we say that the smallest unit of measurement on an instrument will be its instrument's uncertainty. For example, if you have a ruler or a meter stick and you're measuring something, usually on a meter stick the smallest unit of, of measurement is a millimeter. So most meter sticks have an instrument's uncertainty of one millimeter. Now the reason that is is because you can usually estimate if you're measuring an object and it, let's say it goes from here all the way out to here, right? You can usually estimate in between the millimeter marks. Maybe even you can say it's in between and it's a half a millimeter at a certain point. Uh, but usually there's uh, uncertainty at the beginning. Where you place your ruler? Do you, do you place the beginning of the ruler exactly at the spot you need to? Or is there wear on the end of the ruler? So a half here, a half, uh, a half, at each, a half a millimeter at each end would add up to a whole millimeter total. Other examples would include a stopwatch, right? Its smallest unit of measurement is a, is a millisecond, so that is usually plus or minus one millisecond is its instrument's uncertainty. Or if you're using an acceleration or a logger pro and you are uh, calculating the acceleration of an object by finding the slope on a velocity time graph, you'll notice that the slope over here, point, uh, 0.6106, is the acceleration. That's four digits. That means your instrument's uncertainty at least is 0 0.0001 uh, uh, meters per second squared is the uncertainty in your acceleration at least for the instrument. And of course this applies to any other kind of instrument such as weighing things or stuff like that. Typically the instrument's uncertainty is pretty small relative to the amount of uncertainty caused by how you use that instrument. Let me give you an example. Let's say we're trying to measure the length of a dog and you're using a meter stick. If your meter stick isn't long enough to measure the entire length of a dog, well, then you might come up with some method to use that meter stick in a way to measure the whole length of the dog. Perhaps you put your finger where the ruler left off and you move your ruler and measure the rest of the dog. That would cause you to be uncertain. Your finger not, might, might not be in the right spot, right? And you might not move the ruler to the right spot exactly and so therefore you might be more uncertain than if you had two rulers stuck together. How uncertain? You have to decide. It's an educated guess based on reasonable the reasonable method that you use to measure. So for example if I did the finger method of measuring the length of a dog uh, I think I would at least be, this is assuming the dog was still, I would at least be um, perhaps uh, at least a centimeter uncertain. That's a lot more than the instrument's uncertainty of one mi uh, millimeter. If I had to move the ruler multiple times, I'd probably be even more uncertain. So your method matters. Even if you had a really big ruler, right, that would be, you would be a lot less uncertain uh, because you're just using one instrument. However, the dog could be awake and moving. That would cause you to be really uncertain too. If your method of measuring the length of the dog is holding the dog still while he's squirming in your arms and trying to measure the length of him, you're going to have issues and you're going to feel very uncertain about your answer. It's all about how uncertain you feel. In an IB lab, we will only say, we will only uh, not give you the points for it if it is ridiculous, your uncertainty that you choose is ridiculous, either ridiculously large or ridiculously small, but there's usually a large range of acceptability depending because it's more of a personal decision of how uncertain did you feel according to your method of measurement. Other examples include with digital measuring instruments such as a stopwatch. Most people say the uncertainty of a stopwatch is the instrument's uncertainty of one millisecond. This is ridiculous. After all, are you stopping and starting it right at the moment that you're supposed to? I don't think so. Your method of using your stopwatch could affect your uncertainty. For example, are you guys counting down one, two, three, go, and you drop something at the same moment you hit the stopwatch? When do you stop the stopwatch? If you're trying to time how long it takes something to drop, what do you do? Do you wait until you, it looks like it hits the ground? Do you wait until you hear the sound of it hitting the ground? Uh, different methods might be more, uh, more accurate than others and make you feel more certain. So you have to think of how uncertain does your method make you feel as well. Same thing with weights. However, weights, most people just read the number. For example, someone would say, this is 25 pounds. 
That's ridiculous. Someone else measured that, you did not. If that's your method of measurement, I read the number off the weight, you are 100% uncertain. That's like saying that if I had a label on my forehead that said super fit 170 pounds, that means I'm 170 pounds and I'm super fit? I don't think so, unfortunately. So if it says it, don't just take its word for it. Something else could have happened or you could have a very conniving Mr. T that is trying to convince you that he is 170 pounds. Measure it, especially weight. You have to measure it so you know it's uncertainty. You have no idea what the uncertainty is until you measure it because then you know the method that it was measured. The last example that most students get confused with is figuring out your uncertainty with a program like Logger Pro. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, what is the method that I used? So in this method, right, we have to get the data, we get a straight line, we find the slope of a selected area. But if we selected a different area as shown, we might get a different slope. And as you can see here, I'm showing three different examples of three different areas selected, and you can see how much it varies. 0 0.2440, 0 0.2316, 0 0.2433. Now remember, we said the instrument's uncertainty was going to be the uh, was going to be 0 0.0001 millimeters per second squared. Okay, is it varying at the what is that the ten hundredth thousand ten thousandth place? Is it varying at the ten thousandth place? No. Right? It's varying right here at the hundredths place. This one's 2, 4 something. This one's 2, 3 something. Okay, so if it is varying at the hundredths place, it doesn't make sense to say that your uncertainty is 0 0.0001. That's way too accurate. That may be your instrument's uncertainty, but it is not your, uh, the way you use it, your uh, method, method's uncertainty. So the uncertainty for the method of using Logger Pro could be something like 0 0.01 millimeters per second squared. Or if you want to say, hey, it varies 0 0.01 overall, you could argue that the uncertainty could be 0 0.005, right? Because it could vary five up, uh, 0 0.005 up, 0 0.005 down, and so the overall uncertainty is 0 0.01. Um, so you have to decide according to your method, and that's a good way with Logger Pro to figure out how uncertain might you be. Once you've determined the uncertainty based on the instrument and the uncertainty based on your method of measurement, the total uncertainty should be equal to the uncertainty of the measurement plus the uncertainty of your method. Okay, and you just add those two together. Now keep in mind that sometimes, like for example in acceleration, the uncertainty of the instrument is so ridiculously small compared to the uncertainty of the method, or vice versa. It's rare, but it could happen. If that's the case, sometimes you just don't bother adding them. You just take the biggest one, right? 0 0.0001 uncertainty for acceleration here and 0 0.01 uh, uncertainty here. Adding the two would just be pretty, pretty silly. Just take the biggest one. If they're about the same size or around the same size, you just add the two together to get the resulting uncertainty. The last thing you need to do then is write a statement. So you will have to fill out your chart for every single measurement what its uncertainty is. And then you need to make a uncertainty justification. That's a couple of sentences that explains how you got that number, where, how you decided it. It should explain how you know the instrument's uncertainty. It should explain how you know the uncertainty of your method. And then it should explain, hey, I'm adding the two together, or hey, I'm just taking the biggest one because it's so much bigger than the other one. And you have to do that for every single measurement. Okay, so for example, in our first lab, the uh, lab where we roll the cart down the ra ramp, we measured acceleration, we measured the height of the books, and we measured the length of the ramp. You will have to have three statements, three uncertainty justifications, one for each one. Oftentimes, once you figure out the uncertainty of one type of measurement, for example, the uncertainty of the height of the books in our first lab, then you know the uncertainty for every single measurement of the height of the books because you use the same method and you use the same instrument. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes because of the nature of the thing you're measuring, um, the, your method has to change in the middle of your measurement. For example, if you're measuring the height of 
uh, books, but the height of books at first is really small and you're using a meter stick. And then later on, it's so big you have to use two meter sticks. You're going to now be uns more uncertain on the latter measurements than on the uh, first couple of measurements. The, you can talk about that in your uncertainty justification and explain why it's different or why it changes, but in most cases, it often tends to be the same for each measurement. Now it's time to apply what you've learned to your specific lab. Make sure that you decide right now the amount of uncertainty you have for each type of measurement you made and record that in your lab or specifically in your data table. Then make sure that you write a, uh, write a statement that justifies the amount that you chose, the amount of uncertainty you chose for each type of measurement.